grab a songbook and turn to number 525. 525 will be our uh, first song. If, if you're a visitor, if you'll look on the pew in front of you and take a visitor card, fill it out, uh, you're an honored guest and we're, we're thankful that you're here. Uh, there's a list in the back uh, that, that has the CDs from the lessons. If you'd like a copy of those, uh, just put your name on there and the lesson and, and that will be provided for you. Uh, this morning, our song leading will be led by Brother Kerry Moody. Our scripture reading, Brother Robert Hester, and that scripture is Ephesians 4, verses 28 through 30. Ephesians 4, 28 through 30. Our opening prayer, Brother Mike Burke. The Lord's Supper and Giving, Brother Kerry Deaton. And our closing prayer, Brother Gary Northington. Uh, there's a lot of announcements, so if I mess something up, just let me know afterwards and we'll get it corrected tonight. Uh, a reminder that there's a privilege to serve sheet in the back on the table. Please fill those out and give to Ann if there's anything you'd like to update or if you'd like to be added to any of the groupings. Uh, Bevan and Lacey's baby shower table is in the lobby. They're requesting diapers, wipes, and Amazon gift cards. Uh, the Liberty Lights dinner trip to the dinner bell on June 17th. The sign-up sheet is in the back of the building, and the bus will leave at 5 p.m. This is June 17th. Uh, some sympathy uh, we need to mention as far as the community goes. Timothy Slaughter, uh, Robert Johnson, this is Brad Freeland's uncle, passed away. That visitation is 12 to 2, and the funeral is at 2 today, and that's at the Saucer uh, Creek Church of Christ. Uh, Willie Goodwin Kane also passed away. Some more special prayer requests. Jerry Patterson, Judy McQuarrie, Andrew Knight, Olene Lavette is in room 6612 at the Tupelo Hospital. Lynn Floyd, a friend of Daniel Sparks, had surgery last week. Uh, Leroy Dean from Iuka, this is Joyce Hester's uncle. Uh, he has been sent home on hospice. Remember them in your prayers. And also Kenny Reed uh, is having surgery in Memphis this week for a malignancy. Some additional announcements. Uh, the Cherokee Church of Christ Gospel Meeting, which is where Brother David is uh, today, will be uh, being held from June 13th through the 16th at 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, we'll be taking a bus to attend that uh, meeting, and it will be leaving here at 6 p.m. So if you want to attend tomorrow night and ride the bus, it will be leaving at 6 tomorrow night. The Spring Valley Church of Christ in Tuscumbia is also having a gospel meeting. That is June 13th through the 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, the speaker there is Brother Vance Hutton. We will also be taking a bus on Friday night, June the 18th, and the bus will leave here at 6 p.m. as well. The Maud Church of Christ is having a vacation Bible school Friday, June the 18th at 6 p.m., as well as Saturday, June the 19th at 3 p.m. Tishomingo Church of Christ VBS will be June 19th, 9 to 3 p.m., 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Red Bay Church of Christ Gospel Meeting, June the 20th through the 23rd. This will be at 7 p.m. each night. The speaker there is Brother Stanley Ryan. The Danville Church of Christ will be hosting a gospel singing June the 25th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. We'll be taking a bus to attend this and the bus will be leaving the building at 6 p.m. This is June the 25th at Danville. Also check your mailboxes uh, for any mail and reminders out there. If there are no other announcements, uh, Brother Mike Burt will lead us in our opening prayer. Please pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, great and wonderful is your name. We come before you today thanking you and praising you for all that you've done and all that you are to us. We realize how richly blessed we are to have you as our Father. The blessings you've rained down on us in this life, many that uh, uh, have, uh, we have enjoyed in this life, but are not to compare to the ones you promised us in life to come. We thank you so much that no matter what this life has for us, even through the difficult times that we have the promise of heaven with you. We thank you so much for that, and we know that your, uh, your promises are true, and we can count on you through eternity. 
We thank you so much we're able to be here today to worship you. We ask, dear God, that as we worship you, that we'll do so in a way and manner that will be pleasing to you, that we will lift up our voices to you, that we will praise you in all that we do and obey you in the things that you've commanded us to do to worship you. We ask that you be with those who are struggling today, the three families that have lost loved ones that were mentioned earlier. We realize those can be very difficult times, times when we have to uh, decide if we're going to turn closer to you or further away, and we pray that you'll be with those families and help them to realize that, uh, that you're there for them at this time. We ask that you be with uh, Jerry Patterson, Olin LeVette, Leroy Dean, Kenny Reed, and all the rest of those that were mentioned. We realize uh, in this life we have some sicknesses and illnesses that are uh, pretty tough to deal with at times, and they're very serious to us, and we just ask for your blessings upon that. And if it be your will that we be healthy again as we come out from those. We ask that you be with the... Uh, with the speaker here today, ask that you be with him that uh, not only he has a good recollection of the things he's prepared, but that's what we need, and that we'll be good listeners to it, that we all apply that to our lives, live it out in our lives, and be closer to you for it. We come before you realizing that we're not perfect people, though. We come asking you to forgive us of our sins and remember them against us no more. And realize that's the only way that we can be justified in your sight. And that's only possible through your son shed blood. We ask that you will continue to be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 525. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory, thine way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory, thine way. I'm in the glory, thine way.
Standing by the river, waiting for the boatman, listening to the music on the other shore. I can hear the angels singing out a welcome when the friends and loved ones who have gone before. Shadows of the night are swiftly falling. Lo, I hear the boatman soar. Standing by the river, looking me this time mark number 214 be a song of encouragement 214 song before our lesson number 72 number 72 if you would please stand and we sing verses 1 and 4 I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying that I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on high. be reading from Ephesians 4 28 through 30 Ephesians 4 28 through 30 let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands 
the things which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Good morning to everyone. Appreciate the scripture reading. Also appreciate the opening prayer this morning as well. Glad you're here. Hope you've enjoyed your time in Bible study. Would ask you this. Of course, Brother David's out of town. He's doing a gospel meeting. Uh, pray for him this week uh, as he does this. This morning, maybe for a few minutes, we'll get a few things uh, that will help us uh, this week. Something we can uh, put in our tool bag uh, and, and use on a daily basis. Sometimes... You know, as Christians, we read scriptures, we hear scriptures, we, we go through these scriptures, and, and they've something that we've heard maybe a hundred times or maybe even a thousand times. And we kind of consider ourselves like the rich young ruler, and we think, well, I don't have any problems here. But then we dig just a little bit deeper, and we learn something new, and, and we get something out of it that maybe we hadn't ever thought about before. So hopefully this morning, I know you've heard these scriptures. I know you've read, spent some time in Ephesians chapter 4 uh, through this chapter, but maybe we can get some things out of it that will help us. Do you have any old comfortable clothes? Janata laughed, so I know she's got some old comfortable clothes. I've had a few old comfortable clothes. Most of the time, uh, the dryer uh, kind of does some damage to mine, and uh, Mandy ends up inheriting a lot of my old comfortable clothes because they shrink. So I don't have too many old comfortable clothes anymore. But some of you, you know what I'm saying. You have this certain sweatshirt. You have this certain pair of pants. You, it may be uh, uh, pajama pants or house coat or whatever it may be. And you have a tendency that whenever you get the opportunity, you're going to grab that and you're going to put it on. Uh, you want to spend some time in it. And, and these clothes, they may even be stained. They may have a stain on them. They may be damaged in some form or fashion. But we like to go back to those comfortable clothes. Uh, here in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, Paul is trying to tell us uh, that, that we can leave the past behind. So I'm kind of going to use clothes as the analogy here this morning. Um, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 21, if you back up just a little bit, we're told that we have problems. Everybody in here has problems. We have different kinds of problems. But most of those problems come from our way of thinking. Uh, they come from the way we look at life. They come from the way that we look at the world. They come from the way that we look at other people. And sometimes even the way that we look at ourselves. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24, we're taught that we must stop wearing these old comfortable clothes, uh, that we must change our way of thinking. Uh, this whole section, beginning back in verse 17, uh, maybe in your Bible, it maybe even says a new way of thinking. So as we put on the new clothes that God's given us, and most of you understand, all the young people understand, they love new clothes. They like to get new clothes, uh, and they like to wear those new clothes. So as Christians, we are looking to put on those new clothes of Christ. We're created in a likeness of God. We are created in that true righteousness of God. That is who we are. That is what we stand for. And that is what God is trying to transform on a daily basis. Each one of us, as we spend some time in the scriptures, may be looking at some of these verses we've read over and over again. He's continually, on a daily basis, trying to transform us uh, back to the kind of individual that we personally have damaged. We damage that image sometimes. We stain those clothes. We damage those clothes uh, because of our former way of life. Here, Paul is describing these old clothes that, that these Christians run back to. And he wants us to look at those new clothes. He wants us to put those new clothes on. Paul is going to tell us why we need to make these changes in these scriptures this morning. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28, we begin with clothes that take. This implies here in this text this morning that these folks had had some trouble with stealing. They were either doing this before 
becoming Christians, or they was continuing to do this after their conversion. Always there's a close relationship between lying and stealing. You know, the world only calls stealing sometimes, you know, which is taken, we think of it as something which is taken under the cover of night or something that is done in secrecy. Well, God regards and calls the obtaining of what belongs to another by any false representation, by taking advantage of, by gaining of good without a fair and just consideration. Gaining by such unfair means is so common in our world today, in our workplace today, it is called sharpness. It is called shrewdness. You've heard of a shrewd businessman, right, or a businesswoman. You've heard of these things. I don't even know who the individual was this past week. Who is the person that come up with the idea of calling me on my cell phone and telling me, that my Amazon account has been hacked and that there's been a charge of $399.99 charged to my Amazon account and I need to call this number and clear this matter up. Who come up with this? I don't have an Amazon account, so I wasn't in a lot of wasn't no worries. Some of you may, but there is someone here that come up with this means as a thief. This past week, again, I've probably had, I don't know how many phone calls y'all get, but I get a ton of them. Someone called me. They, they, they said they was officer so-and-so. My social security number has been stolen. I need to call this number and clear this up, or they're going to suspend it. They're going to do away with my social security number if I don't call. It's thievery. It happens. It has gotten so common. In our world, where we live today, I think it's time. Maybe we need to address it just a little bit. It has become, when things start to become common, then all of us start to just get accustomed to it. We get used to it. The tradesmen during Bible times, and even during some of your time, they dealt in short weights. They dealt in short measures, overcharges. This week, I took my scales, I took my fishing scales, and I weighed some of the products that I had just around my house. I don't know, maybe my scales are off. But hardly any of them showed the exact weights that was on those. We pay for those. You expect a fair weight. Some of you may even remember, uh, it was several, several years ago, I know of a different, uh, some, some gas stations and different things. You know, they changed their weights on their gas. You got nine-tenths of a gallon instead of a gallon. You wouldn't like that. So on every 10 gallon, they gained a gallon. So they was making a little more money. You have seen this. We have to think about this in our society today. When we think about a thief, we probably think about a professional thief. We would never think of ourselves as a thief, would we? But even here this morning, I want you to consider this as we go through, I, I, I'm not, saying that I'm in the room with thieves this morning, but we also think of time as a thief, right? We mention that. I see posts on social media, different things. Uh, we call time a thief. Uh, so maybe your time this morning, that you invest in your Christianity, that you invest in the time that you spend with God, maybe, maybe we're stealing some time from God uh, by wearing these old clothes, these old actions, that we used to do, take from people. God does not want us to be takers. Consider this. God does not give an excuse for stealing. God does, God does not say to take unless you really need it. You know, even here recently, uh, I was listening to some talk radio, and there was actually, I'm not going to call the name of the state, wasn't ours, uh, some legislation that was put forth in a state that basically said this, if someone came to your house in the middle of the night, broke into your home, and was stealing stuff from your property, it was your responsibility while they was inside your home to make sure that no harm came to them and that they got out with what they needed it because they needed it worse than you do, or they wouldn't be stealing it. 
Now this is stuff that goes on throughout different governments throughout our country. God doesn't say that you can steal if you're hungry or if you're thirsty or if you're homeless. There is no justification provided for it. We don't take for other people. Taking is selfish. Think about it. We start teaching our young people at a very young age about, being, about taking from others. We want them to share. We rid ourselves of self and selfishness by getting rid of these old clothes. So what are we supposed to do? What if we are in need? Instead of making uh, a, a living by stealing and dishonesty here, let him rather work with his hands, approved by God. Laboring with the hands has uh, often been regarded by the apostles as an important agent. It's destroying the disposition and removing the temptation to steal. In other words, promoting honesty. Hardworking, industrious people are seldom dishonest people. Nothing has a better tendency to make a man more moral or honest and upright in his conduct and his character than a labor for a living. This is frequently commanded throughout the New Testament. But we exhort you, brethren, that you may abound more and more, that you study to be quiet and you do your own business and you work with your hands even as we charged you, 1 Thessalonians 4, 10 through 11. And there's other scriptures as well. When parents, within this audience this morning, when you educate and train your children to live by manual labor, then we start them in a path of honesty. Christians, all of us should foster and encourage members, young people, to engage in all those callings of physical industry. Read the rest of verse 28 that he may have something to give him who has need. God tells us that we are to have something to give to others. We are to work with our own hands so that we can share with anyone else who has a need. God is aware that people are going to have needs. He's aware that we're going to have problems. So in this text, we are to be prepared to help. Think about what a different attitude this is than the way the world thinks today. We don't work to build great possessions. We don't work to become rich. We don't work to try to take from other people just because they have more than us. We want to work so that we can be givers in a taker's world. We live in a taker's world. We want to be givers in that world. When given those opportunities, we must realize God had provided us with everything. He give you your job. He give you your resources. Why did he give you those? Well, in this text, so that you can meet the others that are around you physically. And y'all all understand that once we meet those physical needs, then we have an opportunity to meet those spiritual needs. Verse number 29 talks about clothes maybe that corrupt. Now the Lord wants to talk to us just a little bit about how we talk and how we communicate. If you don't have it highlighted in there, we try to change this verse, I think, a little bit. We read it really, really fast where we don't have to fully understand. Where the word no comes in, we like to put in sometimes, by accident, we, we add some things to his word here. He said no corrupt words are to come from your mouths. This word can also be translated into unwholesome, or it can be rotten or putrid, evil, foul. Now we might want to start to define what is corrupt or rotten talk. God's going to give us three points here in this description of the kind of words that are to come out of our mouths. First, we are only to speak words that are good for building a person up. Think about this as the first filter in your line of defense. Everybody understands the purpose of a filter, whether it's a gasoline filter on a car, where it helps take water out, where it takes those impurities out. This is our filter. When we realize we have this filter, 
We also may quickly realize that many of our conversations we have, we shouldn't have had. Even within this text, we find the idea that there's no room for complaining. I like to complain. How about y'all? But fortunately, fortunately for me, I have somebody that helps keep me in line with that. I get called a drama queen sometimes. Who would have thought it, right? You drama queen. I believe I could come into the house with my hand cut off. And it's bleeding, squirting blood all over everything. I'd get told to get back outside. We'd take a tourniquet and put on it. And she'd put a little salve on it and said, go ahead and finish. Come back and see me later, you drama queen. So I get put in my place sometimes. Because I do like to complain. Uh, sometimes just for fun. Sometimes as aggravation. But here in this instance, there's no room for complaining. There's no room for arguing. I like to argue, too. You see, folks, this morning, this lesson is as much for me as it is anybody in this building. I enjoy it. But God here, he's telling me, no, these are not the ways that I want you to be. There's no room for negative words or discouragement. There cannot be words that hurt and tear down. In short, we're just simply not going to talk bad about anyone. We're not going to gossip. We're not going to slander. We're not going to talk bad about people. We're not going to say rotten words about what is happening in our country or in our culture. Last time I checked, there's only a couple of times every two to four years that I'm going to be able to do much about it. It's not going to affect the way that I carry on my daily business. It's not going to affect the way that I handle myself. And that's what's important to God. Second, we're only to speak words that fit the need for the occasion. So not only must we say words that build a person up, but those words are to be said when they are needed. Our words are to be said at the right moment. I've trained a lot of different dogs, a lot of different breeds of dogs. I've trained some different animals, some different things, and I've used physical stimulus and I've used a reward stimulus. And I do know this for a fact. Both of those have to be done at the exact moment for understanding to take place. We are no different. We need that stimulus, that encouragement, that exact word, that right word at the right moment. Whatever moment that may be that you may be in that day. So that's where uh, we pray for that understanding. We pray that we say the right things. The picture is that there is a need in that moment of our words to come in and lift that person up. This puts an end to a lot of our excuses of just telling the truth and let the consequences fall where they may. We're not told to merely just speak the truth, but we are told to speak the truth for what needs to be heard by that person in that moment. You know, there's times in everybody's life when the truth is not helpful. It's not helpful at all. You've walked through the living room. You've walked through the kitchen. You've stubbed your toe on the furniture. And what's the first thing that comes out of somebody's mouth? Should have paid attention to where you was going. Not helpful. Doesn't help that person at all. Maybe there's a frozen pack of peas in the refrigerator. You want me to get those for you? That would be helpful. But that's what he's telling us. Truth. But it's not helpful in the moment. Those words uh, do not fit the need for that moment. You may think those words are helpful, but they're not. Thirdly, our words are to give grace to those who hear. Now, at that moment, we are truly showing ourselves to be made in the image of God. And you may go, look, I can't do that. Some of you, you do that on a regular basis. You do it for me. Each Sunday, when I get the opportunity to preach or speak, a lot of you come out the back door and you say, good job, great job, shake your hands, enjoyed it. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. 
You know, sometimes I don't feel like I've done a good job. Sometimes I feel like things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. But what do you do? You show me grace. You show me encouragement. And through that, I strive to do better. I try to do better. That's what God's telling us here. This is what people thought when Jesus spoke throughout his days. In Luke chapter 4 verse 22, And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Our words are to show grace. Our words can truly be a gift. When I leave here on Sunday morning, you give me a gift when you're encouraging to me. Our words will benefit the person listening. Think about saying words that give grace. This morning, think about these three things. We're only to speak words that build up people. We're to speak words that fit the moment. And we are to give grace to the person who hears. Do we feel like we need to talk a lot less? James said it. We, we've talked about this previously. James chapter 1, 19 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When we slow down, we filter those words. Those words fit that moment. We give grace to that person listening. I know you've heard it probably a thousand times. You ask yourself those three questions. Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Our words will be something that will not be thoughtless or they will not be inappropriate. Matthew chapter 12, 36, Jesus said that we'll, know, we'll give an account for every idle word that is spoken. Verse number 30 talks about clothes that grieve God. The Apostle Paul here gives us a bigger reason why we get rid of these old clothes. And we put on that new clothes, that new righteousness, why it is so important. He says, you have been sealed for the day of the redemption by the Holy Spirit. So why would we grieve him? We belong to the kingdom of God. We have received God's blessings. And we are his children who have been redeemed. We have been brought out of darkness and into light. But when we talk with corrupt words, words that don't build up other people, Words that don't fit that moment. Words that don't give grace to the hearer. Then all of a sudden, we don't look like that we even belong to God. Have you ever seen, one who, seen someone who, who just looked really out of place? They didn't look like they fit where they, where they was at that moment. That's what we would look like. We don't look like Christians that's been sealed with the Holy Spirit. We don't look like we're being kept for that day of redemption, that second coming of Jesus. We don't even look like we have been transformed at all because we continually wearing those old, dirty, torn, stained, Clothes that we love, but they're comfortable, right? We love to be in them. Does what we say grieve God? Does what we say in our social media grieve God? Think about all your posts, your shares, your comments, your likes, your tweets, your Snapchats, your memes. Oh, I like those memes. Some of those are funny, right? We like them. Anything else maybe that you've wrote or put down, are they appropriate for the need? Do they give grace to the people that's reading them? You know, social media for me has kind of turned into a place of, 
where people just go to complain. People go there to tear down other people. People go there to tear down businesses. People go there to um, complain about the government. People go there to complain about our culture. People go there to complain about other people. It simply doesn't give grace to those who read it. If watching the news, one of those things, one of those watching the news kind of got me to where it just, it just made me mad to even watch the news. Do you know what I've done? I quit. I just quit watching the news. I listen to a little bit of radio, maybe a few things to keep up with a few things. If reading social media, if uh, you know, listening to any of these areas, if it causes you some issues to be argumentative, to tear other people down, then I ask you to dis disconnect from it. Put that time that you would have spent being angry into reading God's Word. Something that's good for the moment. Something that's going to give grace to those who hear. Something that's someone that's going to listen more and speak far less. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Someone who has redeemed us. They've brought us uh, to this situation where we have that home in heaven. You see, those old clothes take from other people. Those old clothes, old comfortable clothes you put on sometimes, they, they may speak foul words. They may uh, be, be clothes that grieve the Holy Spirit. We want new clothes, clothes that work, work, at, work with our hands, that work physically and spiritually in, in, in bringing forth the kingdom of God so that we can help other people. We want new clothes to only say words that are good for building people up, that fit the need. Give that grace. New clothes that have been sealed by the Spirit and are ready, right now, this morning, ready for the second coming of Jesus. You know, sometimes when I'm being critical, and I can be critical, I have to remember what God did for me. I have to remember what God is doing for me. This morning... Let's, let's all pray this next week that we are givers and not takers in this world. I wish we had more time. I'd like to talk about verse 31 and 32. And I would love for you to read the rest of that. Maybe spend some time in that this week. And while you're at it, just jump on over into chapter 5 and read verses 1 and 2. Might make a huge difference in your week. This morning, if you're here... Maybe you've had some things that has been astray in your life. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love for you to put on those new clothes this morning. Throw away those old comfortable clothes. Put on some new clothes. We'd love to pray for you. If you're here this morning and you had not become a Christian, maybe you've decided it's time you want those new clothes. Everything's ready. We would love to assist you. If you'd come forward as we stand and sing. Where he sends
in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Preparation for Lord's Supper will sing the first verse of 279. Number 279. Mm -hmm. Why did my Savior come earth and to the Someone will be happy to get them for you. If you would, turn with me to Isaiah 53. I'm going to be reading from verses 1 through 5. Who has believed our report, and to whom, and to whom has the arm of Jehovah been revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there was no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And as him from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity that we have to come and surround this table and partake of this loaf which represents the body of Jesus that was broken on the cross. May each one of us partake of this in a manner that will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now the cup. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're again thankful for this opportunity to surround this table and remember the death of Jesus as he hung upon that cross. This cup which represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. May we remember that sacrifice and remember that time on the cross when it was shed all for us. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. time of convenience and separate apart from the Lord's Supper, now the Lord commanded us to give on every first day of the week. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful and grateful that you have blessed us in so many ways, both material and physical, but mostly spiritual. We thank you that we would look upon all the many uh, material and blessings that you've given through our physical abilities that we will give back a portion to you which is rightfully thine which you have commanded 
These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. If you would, turn to number 200. Sing the first verse for a closing song, number 200. Please stand as we sing. You'll have a closing prayer after this song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer for this time that we've had to come here to study your word. Father, we pray that the lessons we've heard here today will, will apply them to our lives, make us better Christians, better servants of you. Father, we pray for the sick, the ones that have been mentioned, the lost loved ones, comfort them as only you can. Father, forgive us all for many unforgiven sins, and at the end, if we've been found faithful, give us home and heaven with thee. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>